Hello and welcome to Let's Play Dungeon Lords uh, 2012. I'm your host, Nirian. This is what we will be playing in the interim between Blackheart's chapters and likely after I finish the game. Um, this is an action RPG in third person, released by Heuristic Park and Nordic Games in 2012, surprise, surprise. And it's an updated re-release of the original Dungeon Lords, which released back in 2005. It was a relatively terrible game back then. It was buggy on release, and the developers had the gall to release an updated version of that game they had to buy again. So this is like the third iteration that this game has been around to buy. And it's not the highest quality game. It has a bit of charm to it, and it's a unique game that I don't see played very often on YouTube, so that's why I'm gonna go ahead and play it through. Um, I'm gonna admit right now that I've never really beaten the game. It seems to have credits run automatically when it, all that happens. But I'm going to see this game through in this uh, video. And we'll see these credits later once they actually happen. So, without further ado, I guess we just uh, gonna start a new game. Alright, so here we have. I made it just a test hero. This is our character selection and creation screen. We're gonna make a new hero. And as we see here, we have. Um, Four different classes. Fighters are good at stabbing things in close combat. They can wear most armor and use shields, as well as learn rune magic, which is like self buff skills. Mages shoot things with the elements and they use magic staffs, can wear cloth armor. They can also learn nether magic, which is kind of evil summoning magic that we won't be probably, that we probably won't be getting into because it's annoying, but I'll go over that later. We have the adept, which you can think of as your cleric because they wield divine crystals and heal and protect as well as have a bit of damaging magic. They use shields, leather, and they also use the rune magic self buff. And then we have rogues which can dual wield, use bows, open locks easier. They can learn nether magic and open up various things. And here we have all of our various races. We have humans which are your more well-rounded race. For humans and elves, male and female are both provided. The game's a bit sexist in that it uh, assigns different stats. Women are smarter and a bit more agile, but they can take a bit less punishment. You can have, you can meld both a male and female into whatever you want, really. And we have elves, which are more geared towards magic and being rogues. Elf females even more so. We have dwarves, which have high strength and are really weirdly proportioned in this game who are great for being fighters and little else. We have Urgoths, think orcs, kind of, who are even better at warriors at the expense of not being able to cast anything at all, or really dodge and do traps at all. If you play an Urgoth, you're going to hit everything to death repeatedly. We have Wolven, which are wolves. They're again well-rounded, kind of like humans, but they're more geared towards um, being fast and being rogues, but these can be good at most things if you want them to be. Then we have thralls, which are kind of like your goblins, even though this game does have goblins, these are like midget orcs, kind of. Again, somewhat well rounded, more geared towards mad mages and rogues. And of course, like every good RPG, we have lizard men, which are again warriors. And for this playthrough, though, we're going to be playing an elf female, because they're the best mages, I won't be a mage. You can choose your heraldry here, you'll get more heraldry as the game goes on, but this just gives you an initial bonus. Naturally, we are going to go for the one that gives us more arcane bonus, we're going to be an elf mage. Do we get 11 points to assign as we please to our stats, we'll pump up intelligence quite a bit, as well as a bit of vitality. Honor just gives you more experience, so you're paying things you get from experience to get more experience. Kind of not worth it in my opinion. Vitality is health. Agility is movement and attack speed, and your ability to dodge things. Dexterity is your ability to hit things and open locks. Intellect is magic and how fast you regain mana, as well as improves your skills. Strength lets you wear heavy things and hit things hard. So we're going to just pump all these things up a bit. There we go. Something, something, something nice about this game is that it lets you choose left or right-handed. We're going to be the right-handed master race, as elves already are. And you can you have choices because you have pale, really pale, and tan. 
I think it's going to go with tan. And then for hairstyle, we have a few choices. By a few, I mean not many at all, but we have a bit more choice in hair color. We'll also keep that all on default. Alright, so here is our elf lady, who is going to cast magic at everything until it dies. Uh, I'll just call her Teliertha, because not an elf without unnecessary apostrophes. Alright, so here we have Teliertha the elf mage, and without further ado, let's get in this game. His armies defeated, Lord Davimor was desperate to save his kingdom from the onslaught of Lord Beregrin's marauders. It began as a war over who would rule the Circle of Mages, Davimor's powerful ally, Goldwyn of the Meadows, or the arch-wizard Volgar, sage of Beregrin's kingdom. Volgar was after the relics of power, ancient artifacts safeguarded by Goldwyn. For according to legend, whoever unlocked their secret would acquire the magic to rule heaven and hell. In a nefarious coup, Volgar convinced a few within the circle of mages to betray Goldwyn, and the unsuspecting wizard was lured into a trap, spelling his doom. With Goldwyn vanquished, Lord Davamor's troops were soon overrun, and he had no choice but to concede victory to Lord Beregrim and Volgar. But Beregrim's taste for blood was not easily quenched, and he demanded a special prize that would proclaim his dominion to all. The hand of Davenmore's daughter, Elowen, in marriage. For this alone would Beregrim call off his legions of terror. But unbeknownst to either lord, Elowen had already sworn her love to Valdane, captain of Davenmore's royal guard and son to Lord Greymare of the Northlands. Upon hearing his daughter's refusal to marry Beregrim and the confession of her true love for Valdane, Lord Davenmore flew into a rage. He ordered his guards to arrest Valdane and carry him off to a dungeon far away. Elowen's wrath fell full upon her father, and she swore that if Valdane could not have her, no one would. She fled from the room in tears, and the next morning she was gone. Now Davenmore lies deep in a trap of his own making, for upon learning of Elowen's disappearance, Beregrim has accused Lord Davenmore of treachery in a ruse to conceal his daughter, and has once again ordered his army of death to the kingdom's door. Hordes of night warriors, shadow fiends, and other monstrous terrors now march across the lands, bringing death and destruction to all they encounter. Only by finding his daughter and convincing her to honor his pledge can Davenmore hope to save his kingdom from the nightmare of Beregrim's army of abominations. For should Volgar and his dark conspirators acquire the relics of power, they will truly become unstoppable. But all is not yet lost. It has been foretold that a young hero will arise to challenge the forthcoming evil. The relics of power lie concealed in ancient dungeons and castle ruins of kingdoms past within the Forbidden Lands, waiting for the champion who can win them from their guardians. Deep within the wilderness, there are those among the elves, dwarves, and demigods who might be persuaded to stand and fight. Within the circle of mages, there remain a few who despise Volgar, those who might come to the aid of one brave and strong enough to challenge him. And somewhere out there is the lost daughter of a crumbling lord, now stalked by unseen treachery. If only she can be found. If only she can survive long enough. Thus begins Dungeon Lords, the kingdom cracked. A tale of love, hate, betrayal, revenge, honor, and evil. And lots of flailing around at goblins, as we'll soon see. But that's besides the point. So there's our setup. We are a young hero who is going to go to Lord Davenmore to try to help save his daughter from the evil Lord Beargrim and stop his realm from collapsing in on itself. That's our setup, and here we are in our first area. This is Dungeon Lords. Hail, traveler! Uh, I have something for you. This guy wants to say hi to us, so we'll talk to him. I mean you no harm. I carry okay. a letter from the Celestial Order at the Temple of the Cersei. 
The Temple of the Cersei is in the nearby town of Fargro. The start dialogue work in this game, you just have a list of topics, you click all of them, they'll say things. This road will lead you to Fargro. It is said that the seers of the Celestial Order can read the stars and foretell the future. Usually they're not very insightful things. I don't know anything else about them. I am only a messenger. I was told that the one to whom the letter was intended would find me here. I've been camping up for weeks, waiting for someone to arrive. Alright, we have a letter from the Celestial Order, so now we have to go to the town of Fargrove and try to find their temple to learn more about that. Fare thee well! Alright. So this is the world. But first, we're going to go looking at the map. This little center area is Fargrove, and then we have all these various lands. So we're just going to go in the opposite direction of Fargrove and walk this way, because there's a few things here that we want to see. And if we look around, we have a couple spells. Um, magic missiles we'll be using mostly. And here's our first enemies. So combat works by spamming magic missile at everything until it dies. That's, that's how we do. Then we'll take some gold, get some daggers and a potion, more gold. So yeah, that's how combat works with mages. You spam magic missile at everything until it dies. That's how we'll be doing combat at least. So you're just going to walk towards that other way just to look into a few things that might be back that way. Oh, and this game has the best jumping animations. Whee! Yeah. Hardcore jumper. Okay. Oh, combat music. Who's coming? No one's coming. Ah. <laughs> Alright, um, should probably explain that this is our health, this is our mana, level, as well as the experience bar. We have all sorts of other things down here, which I'll get into as they become relevant. But this episode we're just gonna wander around and try to kill some goblins. Maybe get a level under our belt as well, if we get that far. So here we have some goblin camp, looks like. Hills are not my friend here, but we killed some of those goblins. Now we have a goblin mage that we're also gonna just blow up. I'm gonna have to readjust the volume after I check some things over. That magic missile might be ridiculously loud. We'll see. Get shot at by this goblin, so we'll just run in and wail on the goblin. Alright, here's a chest. Here's how we disarm traps on chests. If we fail, we'll get lit on fire. But once we hit disarm, the team will start going. We have to click uh, this button when it's active on the thing, like so. So we get some gold and some boots. What do these fellas have for me? Lots of swords to sell off. Um, yeah. So let's, there's probably in our chests in here. And we do the same thing. These will get harder and eventually we won't, we won't be able to open any chests because that's more of the rogues thing. Unless there's a spell to open chest, but I don't think there is. Got a scroll of fireball and a potion of being a uh, mushroom man. My favorite. Yeah, we leveled up. Thank you, mushroom man. And we also got a new spell from that, which I'll have to go in and reassign. Here is our spell book. Um, we have a f we get a f spells automatically as we level up. A few per level. Well, one per every couple levels. Magic Missile is our spell that we use to shoot things at a long range. Ice Rex close range. Shrieking Star, it doesn't really explain itself. I'll have to cast that spell and use it so you can see. Crystal Magic we won't be using because we're not priests, but that just lets you usually heal your stuff, kill undead, that kind of thing. Nether magic takes, um, like, regans. You need to use items for it, which annoys me. It's your summoning and debuffs. Also, a bat wants to kill us. So we kill these bats. So we kill these bats. Take their wings. 
you're kind of reading for nether spells. But yeah, nether is summoning spells and debuffs. We won't be using much of it, if any, because that stuff annoys me. Um, what else to say? Oh yeah, we leveled up, I should probably sign my points. So we'll put two in there and one in Vitality so we don't die as much. And then, uh, what else? We yeah, have skills to assign as well, I think. Let me try to find those for you. Here we are. These are our skills. We have skill in Magic Weaponry that we're going to assign a point to. As well as, naturally, give a point to Arcane Magic. And we're getting charged by wolves. So I'll blow these up. And spam click the whale on it a bit. Okay, that wolf is dead. So yeah, that's what combat consists of. Running around, spamming buttons. Um, one more skill to assign. What do I want to assign this to? Mm. I think I'll give it to Cloth Armor. You can assign... Your skill level can only be assigned one point per level. So you have to put it in various things. And here comes the thief to try to kill us. Nope. So I think we got something from... Here is all of our stuff. I'm not sure if we can fill up the inventory or not, but... You can't really compare... You have to drag it, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, we have this goblin staff now, which is better than what we were using. Can't wear leather though, so that goes out for that. Alright, and there's not much else out back this way. First can get charged by more random encounters. Like snakes. Ah yes. Now our staff is properly magic. what I wanted. So we'll take the snake skin. Yeah, I think this all goes under. Uh, where that goes under. So we're gonna make our way back to the way we came. And yeah, this is gonna be mostly just the game, just exploring, killing things. I'll readjust the volume for next video because this magic seems really, really loud. But I'll check to see what we need for that when that happens. Ah, oh, we got some expensive armor from that guy. Chainmail pants, can't wear those, we're a mage. I think you have to sometimes identify what you get, but since we're mages and smart, we know what everything is. It's a lot more annoying when you're a warrior because you can't automatically identify everything, I don't think. Might, might be wrong there, it's been a while since I've played this, but I remember having to really try to identify things and failing, and then not being able to try again for a while. But since we're smart mages, that's not a problem for us. So we're just gonna walk back this way. And we're pretty much back to where we started. I think there should be a chest up this way by the wall over there. Yeah, I see it. And let's see what we get in this chest. Oh, things we can't use. Well, here we are where we started again. Next time on Let's Play Dungeon Lords 2012, we're gonna go towards the town of Fargrove. Until then, I'm Nerian, and take care.